Hello everyone, this is Ninja Girl Socket One here, and it is time to review Yashihime Princess Half Demon Episode 16 Double Edged Moroha. Now, being a Moroha centric episode, I absolutely loved it. It was so good. Does it top episode 15? No, but that's because I love Inuyasha and Kagome so much. But this episode comes pretty close. It was great. So yeah, it's basically about Maroha going up against her former master, Yawaragi, who was the wolf demon that we saw holding baby Maroha in episode 15 at the end, when she was taken there for her own safety. So yeah, she was basically her caretaker until she was old enough to take care of herself. But yeah, we see that they are about to fight each other at the beginning of the episode, and of course, Tell and Satsuna are there, but Maroha says, stay out of it, this is my fight. Very typical. Makes sense for a character like her. But yeah. Most of this episode, though, is a flashback and we finally get a little more insight into Maroha's past. Things she had to deal with and stuff like that, which was great. So yeah, that part of the episode begins with Yawaragi taking Maroha to participate in something called a Kudoku. Which is basically where a bunch of demons get together and have a fight to the death. And the last one standing gets the power from all the demons they have slain at the end. Gaining power in the process. So yeah. And this all takes place three years before the present. So Maroha was still a child and she didn't want to do it at first. But when Yawaraki promises her he, her uh, Kurikin Maru, her sword, she does agree to do it. So yeah, she goes in and... She does extremely well, actually. Although, before she goes in, she is warned not to use her rouge during the fight. But yeah. She fights. And then, there is only two left standing. Her and one other demon. And she almost uses her rouge, despite being told not to. But, she then remembers her master's words and decides to try to use her cleverness instead. So, yeah. She just tries to talk to the demon and tries to make a deal. Which, of course, the demon scoffs at and says, Ha! You're not a demon if you would even try to strike a deal. No demon would do that. But then he smells that she has human blood, asks her questions, and even how she can survive in this demonic energy-filled cave. Normal humans wouldn't just completely die from it. But she explains, Well... I have spiritual power, so I just basically purify it. I don't even get affected by it. <laughs> Which startles the demon again, because Maroha is very unique. There has never been a half-demon or otherwise like her with both demonic and spiritual power, but she has it. So, yeah. He again makes fun of her, and yeah, she, uh, she goes on the offensive. She does win, but she chooses not to absorb the powers. But she is still victorious, so good for Moroha. Then, however, she goes to the cave where Yawaragi was waiting. There was a smaller cave where she was waiting for Moroha to either come out or not come out, because it's life or death in there. But yes, but she finds Yawaragi is gone. She took off, which of course pisses Moroha off royally. And this is when we see that Yawaragi is with Jiubei, and they're playing a game, and they're talking about Maroha, and how she'll probably use her ruse during the fight. And this is when we get another interesting piece of information from Yawaragi, that using her ruse kind of zaps Maroha of her humanity each time she uses it. She just loses more and more of it the more she uses it and will eventually just turn into a monster by the end of it if she keeps using it. And we also learn Kagome put a seal on her demonic blood, but she undid it or had somebody undo it, I forget, so that she could use the rouge and use her demonic power. So yeah, that's very interesting. And we even see um, she has this armor, which she explains is cursed. And that's basically why she's uh, playing this game with Jiubei. She's hoping to win enough money to go buy a key that is required to get it off of her. It's called a 
rat armor, I think it's called. But it's cursed, and while it gives power and defense, it also will crush the wearer eventually, unless they get this key and get it taken off of them. <laughs> so it's very dangerous. It's double-edged. Haha. But yeah, it's it's not good. So, yeah. And we also see how she got this armor in this other brief flashback. We see that there were uh, the birds of prey demons, I think they're called. We've seen them before. They would harass the wolf demon tribe. And one day, Moroha was being cornered by them. She got scared and in fear used her rouge. And, well, lost control, scratched Yawaragi, and then passed out. And that's when she came across one of the rat demons. By the way, these are also demons who made the Robe of the Fire Rat, which is much, you know, better <laughs> and not as deadly. But yeah, she comes across this guy, he offers it to her, she takes it, and that's how she got cursed. Yeah. And back with Jiyube, we see Moroa walks in, pissed off, and denounces Yawaraki as her master. And she's furious, she wants the sword, but Yawaraki refuses to give it to her. But then Jiyube makes an offer that if he would basically sell Moroha to him and let her be his, you know, his bounty hunter, that he would give Yawaragi enough money to go buy another key and find a way to get the armor off. And, well, she accepts. Although, as part of this deal, she also has to give Kurikamaru to Moroha. So, she does, and takes off. And that's how Moroha got under Jiyobei's care and is his bounty hunter now. And that's the money she's having to pay back and work off, basically. But yeah. Then, sometime later, Yawaraki has found the Rat Demon Village. However, they are all slaughtered. Which is horrifying because there are women and children there who didn't deserve this. But then, when she looks for the key, she sees that the key she needs is gone, turns around, and we see the culprit of this massive slaughter. Konton. Yes, he is back. And he basically wants Yawaragi to fight Moroha and I believe get the red jewel from her. I think that's what it was. So yeah. And if she agrees to fight Moroha, well, she'll get the key and get the armor off before she's killed by it. But if she doesn't, he will break the key which can also kill the person wearing it. So yeah, she kind of has no choice at all. Also, he's very cold. He says that he didn't even have to slaughter the rat demons to get the key, but he did anyway, just because they're vermin to him. Yeah. Kondon is not nice. So, yeah. And that's when we're caught up with the present, where Maroha and Yawaragi are fighting, going against each other. And, yeah. Maroha is actually losing. Yawaragi's very powerful, and she's having a rough time. And again, she is almost tempted to take and use her rouge. But she remembers her master's words and remembers the reason she has that armor on and decides not to use it. And yeah, that makes the Awaraki happy because for a minute there she was like, you haven't changed at all. But then she sees she did. So yeah, they then both prepare their final attacks. Maroha prepares the Crimson Dragon Wave. And yeah. Yawaragi yeah, prepares her fist. She has a wind power like Koga does. So yeah, she prepares this attack. I forget the name of it. Um, yeah. Kondon's watching, by the way, the whole time. So, they both prepare their final move. And when Maroha lets her power go, Yawaragi yeah, grabs onto Kondon, but he gets away. So sadly, Yawaragi yeah, takes the whole, whole blast. And you can imagine... Yeah, it's not good. So, yeah. And in retaliation for the, I guess you could call it betrayal, Konton breaks the key and runs off. And we see Yawaragi on the ground dying. Moroha runs to her and she tells her that the attack she unleashed wasn't the Crimson Dragon Wave. It was the Crimson Backlash Wave. 
So yeah, she has that now. Very cool, but... At what cost, one might say? But yeah, she says that she's glad that she learned it, she's proud of her. And she has no regrets now that she can handle that power. And... Yeah, passes away, which leads to Monoha breaking down crying. They then bury her and give her a proper... You know, they say a prayer, say their goodbyes. And we hear Monoha say something very much like her father said. In one episode, I forget which one. But yeah, she basically just says how she never fit in anywhere. Because she's not human, she's not demon. She's only quarter demon. There was never a real place for her. Sound familiar? So yeah. But that's when her cousins chime in and say, But you have us now. We're here for you. And that's when Monoha cheers up and is like, yeah, you know what? I do. I have these two by my side now all the time. And she's happier. She's happy again. Which, thank goodness. I want to see that child nothing but happy. So yeah, that, that was great. She finally opened up to her cousins. It was absolutely great. But yeah, that is where the episode ends. Again, very good. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed Yawaragi as a character. For however brief we get to see her, it was still cool. Um, Monoha was amazing as per usual. Adore her. Just very solid episode. 9 out of 10. We could have gotten more with Yawaragi, but it's okay. What we got was great. So, yeah. Now, for the next episode... It seems like the girls are going to be going up against two heralds this time. Oh boy. But they're strong. They should be able to handle it. But we may have a trainer in the midst. Yeah. In this episode, we see Konton has the blue pearl. And where have we seen the blue pearl before? Yeah. Riku. And yeah, Riku's gonna be on this adventure, and he's probably going to betray the girls. So, oh boy, get ready for drama. But yeah, I think that will do it for this review, though. Solid episode, it was great. Really loved it. Excited for more. We're getting a little toward the end, I'm sad. <laughs> Please let there be another season of this. Please, I want more. So yeah. But, if you like this video, leave a like, share it around if you want. If you want to follow me on Twitter, where I talk about Inuyasha sometimes and Maroha sometimes, feel free to follow me there. Link's in the description. If you want to support the channel on Patreon, that will also be in the description below. But yeah, until episode 17, I will see you guys later.